something that could maybe turn things around in Iowa for Bernie Sanders now that he is down over 30 points to Hillary Clinton is his new television ad. Bernie Sanders has released his first TV ad of the 2016 campaign. He was recently interviewed. I believe it was in an interview with Rachel Maddow on MSNBC where he said, yes, we are going to be doing television ads and they are going to be running in some of those early primary states. And that is indeed happening as of Sunday morning. This is a 60 second ad. It is called Real Change. It will air. It is airing in Iowa and New Hampshire, the first two primary states. Let's listen to the ad. Let's watch the ad. And then I, I have some thoughts about it. The son of a Polish immigrant who grew up in a Brooklyn tenement. He went to public schools, then college where the work of his life began, fighting injustice and inequality, speaking truth to power. He moved to Vermont, won election and praise as one of America's best mayors. In Congress, he stood up for working families and for principle, opposing the Iraq war, supporting veterans. Now he's taking on Wall Street and a corrupt political system, funded by over a million contributions, tackling climate change to create clean energy jobs, fighting for living wages, equal pay, and tuition-free public colleges. People are sick and tired of establishment politics, and they want real change. Bernie Sanders, husband, father, grandfather, an honest leader, building a movement with you to give us a future to believe in. I'm Bernie Sanders and I approve this message. So the ad goes into Bernie Sanders backstory, his focus on fighting injustice, really a sort of populist approach to an ad. It touts his credentials as mayor, as congressman and now as an independent senator more populism in terms of being for veterans, being against Wall Street corruption, being in favor of a living wage and tuition free college. And this is pretty common at the beginning of campaigns, a focus on the positives about the candidate providing the backstory. This is particularly relevant with Bernie Sanders because his name recognition deficit is one of the big holdbacks that he's experiencing here. The ad does not mention that term democratic socialism, which is something that Bernie Sanders has been identifying with for a long time. But at one point, if you watch the ad as opposed to just listening to it with us just now, you saw the word socialize appear on the screen at a, at a certain point. Uh, so this is interesting. We will see whether Bernie Sanders in the TV ads plays up the democratic socialism or, or whether he doesn't. In that first debate, he certainly uh, took it took it head on and accepted it, not a label that he is shunning or running away from. He then talked about himself as a husband and a father, which was sort of interesting because in the past, Bernie has um, been against the media focus on the personal lives of politicians as a, as a sort of distraction from important issues. But I think it's a smart move for Bernie Sanders in the sense that everybody knows for the most part, Hillary Clinton's family situation. She doesn't have to play up her role as a mother or more recently a grandmother or the fact that her husband is Bill Clinton. People are more familiar with that. Bernie Sanders, on the other hand, is less of a known entity to many. So while I agree with Bernie that that sort of personal background and those ludicrous questions about focus about his hair that he received from Anna Marie Cox in that interview a few months ago are sort of silly. I think it probably makes sense to the extent that he wants to to frame himself in a particular way to people that don't yet know him to mention his his uh, credentials. And I use that term loose loosely as a husband and a father. A lot of money was spent on this ad and will be spent on the airing of the ad. And we know that TV ads make a difference. We've talked about endorsements. It's not really clear how much endorsements matter outside of maybe a sitting president endorsing you. We know that TV ads make a difference. So uh, what about this particular ad? It's a fine ad. It's not amazing. It's not lame. And an interesting thing that stuck out to me was that the voiceover was done by a female voice. It's pretty rare that you see political ads voiced over by women. Hillary Clinton recently voiced over one of her own ads, and that's certainly more common. But typically when you have a sort of third party narrator in these ads, you hear 
a uh, particularly for male candidates, you hear a male voiceover. And I think that this is actually a very smart way uh, to appear uh, more palatable to female voters without looking like he's pandering. And that, I think, is what sometimes can happen when you take these ads as an opportunity to really go after one particular group. We know Hillary does very well with female voters, and that's an area where Bernie has a deficit. And I think that this is actually a pretty smart way to go about uh, some some attempt to appeal to the female vote, which right now is going disproportionately for Hillary Clinton. The big question we have as the ads start to ramp up is, will we see negative ads? Bernie Sanders has said he will not participate in the attacking his opponent's game, at least with regard to the Democratic primary and Hillary Clinton. Uh, we will see if the Democratic primary ads turn negative. And I think that the better Hillary Clinton does in the polls, the less likely you will see negative ads unless it really starts to get uh, closer, at least as far as Hillary Clinton is concerned.